What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys here another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we're here with another showcase video. This time we're going to be going ahead and talking about the Limit Break expansion of a really really old character um, which is going to be version 1 Shanks 6 plus now before we get into this video uh, massive shout out to areas 077 on my twitch channel because without him this video probably wouldn't exist uh, so es essentially what happened was is I said in the chat that I, I would not be limit break expanding my shanks because I wanted to save materials for future characters and the chat seemingly thought different so <laughs> in today's video we are going to be showcasing the limit break expanded rainbow v1 shanks now i do have to say i've actually i'm actually relatively impressed with what i saw uh, throughout this showcase i've already recorded all the clips as of me recording this part right now this character actually surprised me a little bit in terms of his overall damage as a captain he's actually relatively impressive now of course because he's a limit break expansion character the only real difference is his captain effect the special ability is the same but i guess we'll talk about all aspects of the character before we get into the showcase video so shanks the original shanks here is a psi cerebral slasher his captain effect is going to boost psi characters attack by 4.25 times when they have a matching slot 3.5 times otherwise 1.3 health and then greatly boost the chances of landing on a psi slot so if you have more hp you get more psi orbs and then the less hp you get it's just like neutral matching orb rate right so one thing that i really like about this captain effect is that you don't specifically need a psi orb to get your 4.25 attack that would make this character way worse it's just any matching orb so as long as you have like crewmate abilities or like friend captain abilities that make certain orbs beneficial that makes his character's overall damage actually pretty freaking good and you guys will see definitely later on in this video how that comes to play but amazing captain effect honestly like honestly one of the best captain abilities in the game at this current point in time he is boosting only psi so at the moment there are only like a couple of really good friend captains you can really use with this guy uh but eventually when super type rolls around this character is actually a really solid option for a captain now as for his special it does go down to seven turns which is actually pretty impressive but it goes ahead and will reduce all enemies defense to zero for one turn so if you bring a conditional attack booster on top of this you can actually get some things to happen there and then also you get 75 times his attack in typeless damage to one enemy i wish it was all enemies but one enemy it is what it is and then all slots are converted into psi orbs which of course with his captain effect you get the full board which means you get the 4.25 attack unfortunately it does not get rid of block orbs that's a huge missed opportunity there um so it is what it is there's nothing they can do to change it at this point but it would have been nice if it got rid of block orbs as well because it means that in certain situations you literally need to bring other characters just to get you those matching orbs which does kind of suck um his crewmate abilities he makes psi slots uh psi characters int orbs matching which is good and then also he adds a tap timing bonus with his crewmate ability Another thing as well is that he has a critical hit with his potential abilities and it's 90% chance to proc for 10% additional damage. Amazing critical attack. Like it's up there with like the top tier critical attack potential abilities. Obviously it's not guaranteed, but still 90% chance for 10% is very good. And he does have a support ability, which is also pretty interesting. So to any side character, it says that when they launch their special, it's either it's either a damage dealing or a health cut special. Psy characters will just get psy orbs, which again is a really nice uh, effect to have. So there we go, that's the breakdown of V1 Shanks with his Limit Break expansion. Let's go ahead and move along to the showcase. So getting into the swing of things here, we have uh, actually a pretty good array of clips to show you guys utilizing V1 Shanks as the captain. First clip here is against Clash Ace. Um, when I started recording all these clips, uh, it was during the strength raid boss part of the, of the week, so... Um, there were a few raids that I could try out, and I wanted to try out definitely Raid Ace because I feel like it's probably one of the more difficult raids in the game. And despite that, uh, no problems whatsoever with V1 Shanks. Uh, with this team in particular, it's really good because um, you can use the effect of Kuzan, which will give you a 2.25 times attack boost, which is a phenomenal effect to have. And then it changes all your orbs into either Psy or Quick Orbs. But we also needed a character to get rid of the burn, which will get inflicted on stage 5, which Sabo will do that, the Stampede Sabo, as well as making type orbs beneficial. So with Kuzan and then also Sabo together, it's a nice mix. But then if you apply a beneficial buff, 
Um, Ace actually puts up a barrier, but then there is that Psy Mihawk, which I think is honestly the first time I've ever used this character in any piece of content. He not only will give you an orb boost, but he also removes a turn of barrier. So legitimately, it's perfectly built to take on this raid. No problems whatsoever. We are using Stampede Luffy as the friend captain because um, I believe it's like 12 turns of despair is inflicted on the final boss stage. And of course, as a captain, he completely removes it plus socket. So it's a really nice addition to have characters like that to take on a raid like this. The next clip here is against Ambush Garp, and the real interesting thing here is you probably wouldn't believe it, but there's only two Psy characters in the game that can remove damage immunity, and they're both treasure map rare recruit characters and luckily i have both of them so we're going to be using them on this team now ambush garp is a relatively old piece of content now so he's not really too tricky uh and i am using stampede luffy as the friend captain i actually completely forgot that he gets rid of all turns of paral 10 turns of paralysis as a friend captain so i didn't actually need to bring the christmas nami on this team kind of a little bit overkill but either way uh you don't even need the trafalgar lore on this team either uh you could probably bring a delayer and some damage reducers to just bypass the damage immunity that Garp and Flicks here, um, but overall, you know, as I said, it's a relatively old piece of content, so V1 Shanks with the correct friend captain isn't really going to have too many issues in this fight. So now we have a relatively longer clip here, so we can talk about Shanks a little bit more. But just talking about this clip, it is against Clash Carrot, and this was probably the more difficult one for me to build a team for, because on stage 5, Carrot is Int, but transforms into a Strength character, so V1 Shanks doesn't have any type advantage, which is a pretty big downside here. So this team is a little funky, but at least it actually was able to beat it, which is pretty cool. But one of the great benefits of Shanks being such a significant, powerful Psy Captain is that he can utilize a very good amount of really other powerful Psy characters in the game. Namely, uh, the Shanks crew legend, which you guys are seeing in this clip, and then previous to this, we used Stampede Luffy. Those two in particular are like the key Psy Captains that you'd probably see the most usage. If you are using V1 Shanks as a captain, you would probably be bringing one of those two as a friend captain. And the real big downside to V1 Shanks as a whole is that is that special ability. Like, it just doesn't provide much to your team. Like, yeah, you can reduce defense, but it's just not that useful. Uh, you know, getting the full board of matching slots can be useful in some circumstances, but he doesn't get rid of block orbs, which of course is a pretty big downside as well. So you are heavily relying on the other characters on your team to give you your boost, to give you your debuff removals, those type of effects. So a lot of people might think it's a cop-out just hybriding up all the other teams, but the thing is, Shanks just doesn't provide that much as a sub with his special, or, you know, as a captain, he doesn't provide much to your team aside from those orbs, and as I said, doesn't get rid of block orbs, so it is a pretty big downside to the character to not really be able to be doing much for your team. If he had, like, some OP debuff removal, that would be quite big, but unfortunately he doesn't, which is why you need to rely on other friend captains to get through difficult content. Of course, if, if, if the content is relatively old or it's really easy, you could run double V1 Shanks, and then a bunch of really good side characters as subs, and that can definitely get the job done as well. But, as I said, in more difficult content, no, you will struggle to get through it with double V1 Shanks, but that's the benefit to him. He's a side captain. There are lots of very good side captains that you can use in the game right now, so that's one of the great benefits to Shanks. So finishing off Carrot here, you can see we actually are unable to kill Carrot on the burst turn, but we are able to use Sanji and Judge, and then obviously use Shanks to get the full board of orbs, and that is enough to get the KO, uh, even though we are unable to kill <laughs> on the first burst turn of attacks, which is obviously not a great benefit, but it is what it is, we still got the job done.
And of course, Clash Jimbei is currently out right now as of me recording this video. And there is the condition with that fight, you can only bring strength and Psy characters. So of course, I wanted to go ahead and use Shanks against that as well. We're using Stampede Luffy here as a friend captain once again, because he's just really, really good here, uh, enabling us to just get through stage three much, much easier. And uh, in terms of boost on this team, we've got Trafalgar Law, who is an orb booster and the base chain lock slash booster effect. And the Raid Kobe and Helmeppo unit is also a very good unit to remove Threshold on the enemy side of the field, as well as giving your Psy and Int characters a 1.75 times attack boost. But I think if you've got a certain amount of Psy and Int characters on your team, then you actually get a two times attack boost. So yeah, it's a really, really nice team built all together. Um, Christmas Nami here as well is just a phenomenal character to have with amazing gear buff removal and also changes block orbs into matching as well uh, and then we are using i believe corazon support on trafalgar law to remove some bind remove an additional two turns of paralysis to enable the team to actually kill off the final boss fight um, and then obviously the otama character is very very good here because she removes the enemy's blue shield defense by four turns she actually in her special removes four turns of despair as well so it's a really nice addition and then makes badly matching orbs into matching so you could do that or you could use the shank special there in order for you to get those matching orbs if you do want to do that as well it just depends on the content and the type of characters that you aim to bring on your team against clash jimbei and with v1 shanks being limit break expanded his stats across the board are very good and with the critical hit chance that he has a 90 percent chance for 10 percent extra damage typically shanks is going to be one of the last characters to attack in your combo chain his damage is going to go through the roof especially getting type advantage against an int boss he is going to be your go-to for dealing as much damage as you can in your team does depend on your team composition though because in this specific example my trafalgar law actually has more stats than my v1 shanks so in in theory i really should be attacking with my law last so he gets the highest boost possible but either way here's the special animation for v1 shank it's been a very long time since i've seen it actually so really really nice and fresh to see it once again but anyways i'll leave you guys with the rest of this clip and we'll move on to some garp challenges All right, so getting things started here, Revolutionary Army number one. So with this team, this is actually a full free-to-play team with Shanks as the captain. So full free-to-play subs, which is wicked. Um, I did actually have a couple of legends on this team, but then as I actually completed it, I realized that I could switch out characters to make it more free-to-play friendly, and it's actually very easy. Um, once again, Shanks crew as the friend captain is really going to carry you through a lot of these Garp challenges. The consistent 1.5 attack boost that you get every single turn is massive. You can see here on this stage against Kuma, we're using the Shank special to reduce his defense to zero, which enables us to get through that much easier, which is great. Um, but yeah, as I said, Shank's crew as the front captain, enabling you to get the 1.5 attack boost every single turn, just adds to that. And remember, he's also giving adjacent orbs beneficial, which means you're getting that 4.25 attack boost with your V1 Shank's captain. It's so freaking good. Uh, this is an example here where we're using the Colosseum Komorosaki. We use her multiple different times in this fight because remember, she has double special activation. With her special, she reduces uh, two turns of bind, rainbow shield. She reduces a lot of different debuffs and adjacent orbs are changed into matching that goes through block orbs. Amazing, amazing effect. And then on top of that, when we use the Komorosaki special, we can use the switch of Shanks crew. So uh, literally everyone has a matching orb on this team except for one character, which is awesome. So that's a, a really nice effect that you can have. Um, and then uh, we also have Treasure Map Vivi, who is a 1.75 times attack boost. Uh, I don't remember. I think we actually use her twice. Yeah, we don't actually need her special until the final boss stage, which goes to show the amount of power that this team actually has. Um, same with Invasion Sengoku, because he's actually one of the most underrated characters to utilize with V1 Shanks. I didn't actually think about it at the time, but um, a couple of people on my stream yesterday were letting me know that, you know, Invasion Sengoku is actually a really solid option for V1 Shanks, and it actually makes a lot of sense, right? Because remember, when you're using the Shanks special, you get a full board of Psy Orbs, and if you guys don't remember what Invasion Sengoku does, when you launch his special, he does a health cut, which is good, and then he will go ahead and state that if your team has four slots of the same color, then he makes those slots beneficial and your whole team gets a two times orb boost for three turns, a three turns, two times orb boost. So as long as you have, you know, uh, the same colored orb, you know, at least four times on your, on your team, when you launch your special, you can do that. And then it's just a perfect combination with Shanks, of course. 
Something about Shanks that I personally am not a really big fan of is the fact that he doesn't really have too many good supporter characters. There's only like two or three supporter characters I can think of off the top of my head that would somewhat be usable with Shanks. Um, two of those of which are treasure map rare recruits, you know, with Lucky Roo and Yasop. Those ones, they're not really that good for this Shanks in particular. They were really good for the treasure map Shanks and Ben Beckman character. But uh, the other one I was thinking of is the global first support character, which was uh, Makino. Makino has a really good support where um, if you're ever inflicted with blindness or chain lock, she removes three turns of blindness and chain lock. It's a really nice effect to have. And I think we actually utilized it against Clash Carrot, which you guys would have seen a little earlier in this video. Um, you're actually able to use it in the other Garp challenge. We have another Garp challenge clip coming up in this video against the Whitebeard challenge. And uh, on stage 6 of that fight, is it stage 6 or is it stage 8? Stage 9? Either way, the, the stage with Marco and Vista, you're inflicted with Chain Lock. You can use like that support ability to remove it, which is really nice. But uh, either way, um, there's lots of different units that you can use uh, as a support, I suppose. But there's not really that many like top tier support characters for Shanks, unfortunately. So I would like to see them potentially explore that fact, you know, maybe apply some, some new ones in the future in some point. I don't really know what characters they could do or what type of effects they could really do, but I do think that Shanks does need some really OP support characters just to make him a little bit better. Even though Shanks crew is already really powerful, you know, I'd really like to see some more support characters and see what they could do with it. So we've reached the boss stage now pretty much, so I'll leave you guys with the rest of this clip as we take on the Revolutionary Army number one, and then we'll go ahead and pick things up once we get to the final clip of this video against the Whitebeard Garp Challenge. Alright, so getting into the final clip of this video against the Whitebeard Garp Challenge. So, this team in particular is not free-to-play subs. Uh, we are utilizing Shanks Crew once again as a friend captain, and it's because that 1.5 attack boost you can get every single turn is just way too good, and those matching orbs as well. Um, so, with this team in particular, we've got Christmas Nami. She's very good because we can use her on this stage against Kuriel to remove attack down, and we can then use her again on the Marco and Vista stage to remove the paralysis and attack down once again. So, very powerful unit, that Christmas Nami. We've also got Raid Bato because one of the stages I was very, very scared about is the Ezo stage, and I felt like having a damage reducer would be pretty useful for that stage. So, I'm bringing Raid Bato. Worked phenomenally. Very, very powerful unit to bring here. Then we've got Mr. One. Now, Mr. One is very good because he will remove the Rainbow and Blue Shield against Jozu, um, which is nice to have, uh, and then he also provides a little bit of a health cut too. So, you'll see how we deal with Jozu once we get there. And then the other unit on this team is V2 Katakuri. Now, some people might I think it's a bit of a cop-out, but hey, I brought V2 Katakuri. I hadn't used him in the whole video yet. I really wanted to use him because he does make certain challenges much easier because legit, just tank a bit of damage all the way through the fight. Final boss stage, proc the special, lots of damage. GG, we win, boys. V1 Shanks is goaded. <laughs> so, yeah, as I said, you know, that's basically how the team rolls. We just, you know, slowly plot our way through the fight, and then final boss stage, we just go ahead and use the V2 Katakuri special, along with the Shanks crew special, of course, because his special ability is not only the chain lock, but you get a health cut. So you use the health cut first, then use the Katakuri special for a huge chunk of damage removal. Uh, unfortunately, V1 Shanks doesn't have the slot bind removal with his uh, potential ability, so he will not get a matching orb at all on the final boss stage, which is which is kind of annoying. You know, if, if he was able to get a full matching orb, I would maybe build the team a little bit different, because, you know, if you don't have Katakuri, it's fine. You can literally replace it with 
any other humongous damage dealer of any kind. You could literally bring like V2 Kuzan, for example, to get a full board of orbs and an attack boost. You could use that instead. I think that would work out quite fine. You could just replace Katakuri with nearly anything, as long as it's a huge boost to your team. That'll actually get the job done. So overall, my impressions of V1 Shanks, I think he has a phenomenal captain effect that can be used in a lot of pieces of content with amazing hybrid captains. The only downside here is, is his special. His special provides hardly anything to your team. Potentially, you can use him on a mini boss stage just to allow you to get those matching orbs guaranteed. Or if you need, you need to reduce the enemy's defense, you can go ahead and use his special. But you are heavily relying on your subs and your friend captain to provide the boosts necessary in order to get through content or the debuff removal necessary in order to get through the content so that's the only real downside to the unit but outside of that there, there pretty much is no negative to the unit like aside from the special alone he is a really good character and uh, do i suggest limit break expanding him no i do think you should save your materials for other characters in the future but if you do do it you're not really missing out too much because he is a really good side captain if you don't already have one so that is going to conclude this video today i really hope you guys enjoyed it and if you guys did enjoy it make sure you go ahead and hit the like button and if you want to stay up to date with all the content i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i'll see you guys within the next video